Peace, everybody. It's your brother, Mark Lamont Hill. We're here tonight talking about Beyonce. Should she be criticized for remaining silent on Israel and Palestine? Obviously, as you know, since October 7th, the world has been talking about Gaza. The world has been talking about Israel. The world has been talking about Palestine. And the fundamental question that people have been asking uh, with regard to Beyonce is, should she be speaking out about what is going on in Gaza right now as the Israeli military continues to invade, continues to bomb, continues to attack Palestinian people. Should she speak out? Now that's a general question that people ask, not just about Beyonce, but about Taylor Swift. Not just about Taylor Swift, but about anybody who is a big celebrity. But it got even more specifically targeted toward Beyonce on December 1st because Y'all know Renaissance, the concert film, came out. And if you don't know, Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, is the concert film uh, that documents uh, in really superb fashion uh, Beyonce's summer concert tour for the album Renaissance. And the, the film is debuting in New York. It's debuting in Paris. It's debuting in, 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 in all over. But it's also debuting in Israel. And again, people are furious. October 7th, an all out war on Palestinians happens. December 1st, this war is still going on. It's, it's in the 50s, the number of days that the siege and the bombardment of Gaza is going on. And Beyonce has not only not said anything, but now her film is debuting there. And so after that happened, people went nuts on the internet. You had people who were saying Beyonce is a sellout. Beyonce is a revolutionary fraud. Beyonce pretended to be about that social justice life when it came to Ferguson and Minneapolis and Black Lives Matter. And now suddenly she has disappeared. You had other people saying, well, wait a minute. Why are we holding Beyonce to the standard? Beyonce never claimed to be a social justice warrior. Beyonce never said that she was a social justice, uh, freedom fighting, uh, Paul Robeson type you know, why are we asking her to do that? And there's an unfair burden being placed on a black artist. There's an unfair burden being placed on a black woman artist. So this is the debate. This is the conversation that people are having. And I said, look, let me jump in this thing and have my piece, my, my, my uh, piece of my mind on, on the issue as well. And I think there's a couple of things that we have to think about when we talk about Beyonce and Israel, Palestine. There's a couple of points we have to make. And let me start with the most obvious point that unfortunately does not get made on Beyonce's internet enough. And that is multiple things can be true at the same time. I'm going to say that again. Multiple truths can be true at the same time. You can have a point that is 100% accurate. And someone else could have a point that is also 100% accurate. They may not be competing claims. And we have to understand that because when we talk about Beyonce in Israel, that's exactly what's happening. And here's my point. First, does Beyonce have a responsibility to speak out against Israel? Yes, 100%, 1000%. She should be critiquing Israel. She absolutely should be critiquing Israel. She should absolutely be decrying what's happening in Palestine right now. She should be using her bully pulpit to talk about what's going on in Gaza. Why? Not because she's Beyonce. Not because she's the greatest entertainer living today. But because she's a human being. Every human being should be speaking out against the atrocity that's happening in Gaza right now just like they should be speaking out against what's happening in Kashmir, just like they should be speaking out about what's happening in Congo, just like they should be speaking out against what's happening in Haiti, just like they should be speaking out against what's happening all over the world. So Beyonce doesn't get a, a, a get out of jail free card because she's famous either. So yes, as a human being, she must talk about these issues. Now, some people say, well, sure, but we don't ask all other people to do that. That's also true. We often hold Beyonce in particular and all other black artists to an unreasonable standard. Taylor Swift also had a film debut. Taylor Swift also went over there. Taylor Swift also is an international 
superstar that shakes that shuts down local economies when her concert is in town but she's not getting slammed the same way a ton of white artists aren't getting slammed the same way there are politicians who we elect in office who aren't getting slammed the same way for not speaking out on this issue so let's be very clear beyonce absolutely is getting held to a different standard for not speaking up on israel palestine and oftentimes black people in particular black people in particular are asked to be the poster children the the frontline soldiers for other people's social justice fights and when i say other people's i'm not saying we don't stand in solidarity i'm not saying we're not united in, in, as human beings i'm not saying that we don't stand together as oppressed people but very often i will i find that people all over the world will say why isn't this black person speaking up? Or they'll be on Twitter telling everyday black people, why haven't you tweeted about this? Why aren't you talking about that? You better show up. And those very same people don't show up to our stuff. So I do understand the frustration. I do understand the extraordinary burden uh, that's placed on artists and black artists and everyday black people to be kind of the foot soldiers for other people's struggles. I get that. I get that. If you want to stand there, hit the, hit the like button, by the way, y'all. If you're watching this live, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, keep the conversation going by joining, hit the like button, keep the conversation going. Let's talk about this thing. So two things can be true at once. Beyonce does have a duty to speak out. And Beyonce also is, is being unfairly criticized or excessively criticized. Now, here comes the other part of it. Beyonce is being un excessively criticized, but Beyonce also entered herself into that realm by speaking out on some issues. When Beyonce is dressed up like a black panther when beyonce is shouting out to mika mallory my dear sister organ about organizing marches when she's out there speaking about feminism she is now entering a domain of thought of public thought of political activism she is articulating a particular political vision that says hey i'm thinking about the world and most of you beyonce stands out there and i'm a beyonce stand again no no shade to beyonce here um, most of you Beyonce stands out there were always running to her defense saying, see, y'all underestimate Beyonce. She knows the world. Even when she doesn't speak up, she knows what's going on. She speaks truth to power. She is a courageous person. She knows what's going on. She is a thinker. She is an activist. She is this, she is this, she is this. And so when it's time to sing Beyonce's praises, some of you act as if she is the most radical political activist in the world. But then when it's time to hold her accountable for that activist identity, y'all go, well, I mean, she's just, she's just a singer. I didn't know she was a diplomat. I didn't know she was a member of Congress. I didn't know that she was an ambassador. Why are you making Beyonce be all these things to all these people when she just wanted to sing and never said that she uh, was anything else? Look, Beyonce absolutely doesn't claim to be anything else. She's not a fraud. Beyonce is exactly who she says she is. But again, multiple things can be true at the same time. Who Beyonce is, is also worthy of critique. Beyonce also talks about being a billionaire. You don't get billions, which isn't, let me be clear, because I don't want to get fact-checked by, uh, by, the, by, by the Beyonce police. I'm saying, look, Beyonce doesn't I claim to be a billionaire, but Beyonce talks about having money, right? The best revenge is your paper. She talks about being powerful. Uh, so does Jay-Z. So does... Uh, Kanye, when he was allegedly a billionaire, so does all these, so do all these people, right? It's nothing specific about Beyonce, but the point is, when you have a billion dollars, and when you generate industries that are worth billions, when you are powerful in that way, when you are wealthy beyond the GDP of most nations, you are not just um, a bystander. You are actively involved in economies and politics that lead to violence, that lead to destruction, that lead to poverty doesn't mean you're not a great philanthropist doesn't mean you don't give money back doesn't mean that black rich, rich folk aren't infinite infinitely better than a whole lot of their non-black counterparts when it comes to giving back money donating you know redistributing wealth all that stuff that's true but it doesn't negate the fact that being a billionaire is a gross thing it's a morally indefensible thing to have and so from that position again we got to be able to critique and say look you got the pulpit, you got the power, you got the money, and your hands ain't clean by virtue of being so rich. So you need to stand up and say something. You need to stand up and do something. But, and this is where some of y'all might disagree with me.
Beyonce is doing more than just being silent. Beyonce has a film, Renaissance, a, con a film by Beyonce. It's debuting in Israel. That's not neutral. That's not quiet. Having your film appear in a country that is oppressing Palestinians, when Palestinians have made a very clear and consistent call from their civil society to boycott, to divest from, and to sanction, not people, but companies, corporations, and other entities that are complicit in the oppression of the Palestinian people. In other words, you've been asked to not play Jim Crow. You've been asked to not have a film show up in Jim Crow. Imagine, <laughs> imagine Ray Charles saying, you know, I will play in Georgia in a Jim Crow arena or theater where I'm the only Negro that can show up. Imagine James Brown showing up and saying, you know, I'm going to perform. Imagine Aretha Franklin say, I'm going to perform in the States in this place. There's an asterisk with that because we got to talk about Aretha in South Africa. That's a whole other conversation. It's an apartheid state and you're playing. We would have never defended Stevie Wonder or Michael Jackson for playing in apartheid South Africa. We would have never said, you know what? Michael Jackson is showing the thriller video to a, to a packed theater in, 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 in Johannesburg, but it's okay because he's just a singer. No, we would hold him to a standard. And if we didn't, we'd be wrong. And so, yes, Beyonce has a responsibility. You can say, well, Beyonce can't control that. That runs through the movie theaters, and the movie theaters are an international uh, chain, and it's going to play in, 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 in Paris, and it's going to play in Belgium, and it's going to Brussels, and it's going to play in, 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 in Toronto, and it's going to play in Tel Aviv. And Beyonce can't do nothing about it. Yeah, right. Beyonce can do something about it, or she can speak up and say, I don't approve of this. They're going to do it, but I don't approve of it. You can use your voice. So, yes. Beyonce has a responsibility to not play Jim Crow theaters. She has a responsibility to not play Jim Crow arenas. And many of us were excited in 2016 when Beyonce canceled two tour dates. She was supposed to extend uh, the Formation World Tour, and she was supposed to be in Israel for two dates. And she didn't do it. And her team officially said, uh, uh we just we decided not to extend the schedule because we're just going to wrap up the tour. And many people in the BDS movement said this is what we call a soft boycott. She didn't want to make a public declaration. She didn't want to uh, go to the mat, but she did a soft boycott, which still had a material impact. And I was like, cool. Again, I'm not expecting Beyonce to be on the front line of every movement. I'm not asking her to speak out on every movement. But not playing Jim Crow is a pretty low bar. And that was a bar that, unfortunately, our dear sister didn't meet this time. She did last time. She didn't this time. And that's something we do have a right to critique. Now, I'm going to back up again. That said, y'all are asking her to critique this issue, but none of y'all were outraged when she didn't speak out about Congo. Y'all were out. Y'all were y'all were not rolling around Twitter when she didn't speak about Tigray. Y'all weren't running around when she didn't speak about Uganda. And some of y'all got more smoke for Beyonce than you do for DJ Khaled, who is Palestinian and ain't said shit. So, you know, again, let's not put an excessive criticism or an exclusive criticism on Beyonce, but we cannot let her off the hook. Again, not just because she has a huge platform because she's rich and because she's famous and all of that and powerful and all of that, but because she's a human being. But also because when Beyonce shows up in Israel, she legitimizes the Israeli state. And there's another thing I'm going to add. If you look on the internet, there are Israeli soldiers right now. There are Israeli citizens right now who are claiming victory and, and celebrating the, the, uh, the, the, the brutal violence against the Palestinian people. And you know what song they're playing? You Won't Break My Soul by Beyonce. They're literally saying, you won't break my soul, talking about the Palestinian people. So they are appropriating Beyonce's music for a genocidal project. 
you got to stand up and say that don't represent me. No, I know you didn't authorize it. I know you don't want that to happen. I know you don't know anything about uh, 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 I know you didn't give it to them. Let me say that. I know you didn't give it to them to do that. But that ain't the point. When Donald Trump was rolling through this country playing people's music, artists stood up and said, Donald Trump, stop playing my music. Donald Trump doesn't represent my music. I don't want Donald Trump playing this on the campaign trail. People wanted to separate themselves from it. Now, this is a little bit different because it's not a, a copyright issue. But still, you can say those soldiers don't represent me. Those people who are celebrating the bombing of Gaza don't represent me. And when I said you won't break my soul, that was an homage to black people, to black queer people, to black women, to people who struggle, to people who sacrifice, to people who are under the foot and the thumb of oppression. It wasn't for oppressors. It wasn't for colonizers. It wasn't for the people who impose apartheid. She could say all that or she could just say, hey, I don't want anybody using my song for that purpose. She could say, hey, I'm not going to play my 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 uh, my tour film in this theater in Tel Aviv. She could do all those things. She can do those things. That's what it means to be a responsible voice. So look, yes, Beyonce is wrong for remaining silent on Israel, Palestine. All of us are wrong who remain silent on Israel, Palestine. Just like we're wrong for other issues, we can't exclusively focus on Palestine at the expense of everything else. We gotta look at the interconnection. I'm just as mad at people who are Palestinian who speak up about Palestine and ain't say shit about Chicago or Philly or Detroit. You're not blameless either, we see you. So everybody has some critique here, but yes, she's wrong on this issue. Doesn't mean we throw away, doesn't mean we dispose of our sister, doesn't mean we don't love Beyonce, but we say, hey, you got work to do here. We all got work to do here. And with loving critique, we're going to gently direct you in that way. So that's that on that. Appreciate y'all. Everybody hit the like button if you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, I don't care. I love y'all anyway. Also, hit the subscribe button, family. The way we build this channel out is if you hit that subscribe button and you come back for all the updates to see all the new content, all the new ideas, all the new conversations that I have, make sure you check out the most recent conversations we have. Hit the subscribe button. And also, if you like what I'm doing here, please hit the join button. You can join this platform. You can become MLH fam, and it allows us to build, expand, and grow the platform and do the work that we know needs to be done in the world. I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Peace.